Okay, great. So uh, time for a, a webinar discussion. And this time we have uh, Kerit for Nordics and discussing the Swedish and, and global angel activity with uh, Jesper Wiksner and, and this is Angel Ronja Kolke. And uh, yeah, great to have you on board and maybe you could give a quick introduction about yourself. Uh, Ronja, maybe you should start? Sure. Um... So I am. I guess I'm one of the younger business angels still in Sweden. I'm 30. I did my first investment when I was 24 in a hard tech company uh, and a hardware. Uh, sorry, it's still early here. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was part of Stockholm Business Angel for about a year, and now I'm part of Getsu Forum Nordics. And I'm invested in IoT company, AI, um, online health, um, fintech. So I'm trying to get broad investments. So I get to learn more about each industry. My background is in journalism and acting. So I make sense in this industry, I guess. Perfect. So uh, I guess we're not going to be short with words this time. So, so excellent. Good to have you on board. Uh, Jesper, you as well, uh, Active Angel yes. in Sweden. Good morning. Uh, nice to be here. Um, so my background is I've been working within the telecom industry for uh, quite a lot of years. I built or, or part of building a software company within the telecom industry. I left the company uh, five, six years ago and started to act within the um, startup community. And the first goal was actually to find a startup to invest and work within. But um, during that uh, period, I also met with Angel Investor Network Stua for Stockholm Business Angels and decided to invest in their fund. So through them, I spent a lot of time uh, learning and um, um, educating myself in how to find um, and evaluate startups and build a portfolio of, of, uh, of uh, investments. And I spent a few years there. Um, parallel, I did some other activities within startups as well here in Stockholm. Uh, but about uh, three years ago, we were asked if we wanted to bring um, K Retsu to the Nordics. And I was one of them lucky enough to get an offer. So I started working with that um, autumn 2015. And uh, I have spent more or less all my time with that since then. So that's very short about my background. Great. I have um, several investments through Stoaf, but also private and different areas, uh, med tech, software, uh, but also crowdfunding, and those kind of things. Okay, yeah, that's really interesting. Me. Okay, great. Well, looking forward to, so really exciting to have you on board and, and discuss some of your angel perspectives from especially Sweden, but as I mentioned, k is is a global forum, forum for, for angel investing. So let's get into those details uh, in, in very short. But before that, I'll, I'll just, so the idea for this is I'll show just a few more slides. Uh, we'll structure the, the discussion uh, with the aim to discuss your view on angel investing. How do you see the Swedish ecosystem eventually cross-border investing, highlighting some of the profiles and structures? What to consider when interested in Sweden and, for example, the, the, the k to form on, on the global level. So let's do that. And uh, eventually, if there's any, any, any additional, that's always good to, to be included. But uh, maybe shortly, so as, as men, Klaus Mikko Nielsen, myself, also part of the Nordic Ban Not-for-Profit Association, are linking the Nordic Angel and this kind of an angel dating service. And currently, we have the 11 angel networks in Nordic Ban. And, and uh, of course, the, the main goal is to have more of these great individuals like yourself to be linked with each other and and the main reason is to build trust in that form as as we have local deal flow local startups but why on earth would you invest overseas cross-border well it's more like you you find colleagues and, and angel profiles for example on the same like-minded industry or regional level that you like so so that's one of the main goals so that's part of what the, the aim is for today but Jesper, you had some slides you would like to show as well so i could uh, stop sharing my slides and you just take over and, and it's time for more of the, the, the Keiretsu information. Okay, so I'll start with a short background um, about um, Keiretsu as a network. So I'll try to start a presentation here and see if you can see it. <clears throat> that started well, thank you. Okay, so what we, what we usually say, it's a, it's a great association with quality deal flow. And what do we mean by that? Well, it's an association of over 3,000 angels throughout the globe. Uh, and we work together in evaluating companies and make sure that we do even better investments. Uh, we are present in 53 places around the globe in both US, uh, Europe, and Asia. Um, 
looks something like this. Maybe I should actually do like this, even better, right? Sure. So 53 chapters in 23 countries, uh, founded back in 2000 by a gentleman, Randy Williams in San Francisco. He started out uh, investing in these type of companies and uh, realized that it was tricky and hard and high risk and started to gather uh, friends around him to do better evaluation of these companies. Uh, and this network grew and got bigger and bigger. And today, obviously, it's still the biggest Still, the biggest part is in the U.S., uh, where it's uh, extremely big, but it has grown throughout Europe and, and Asia, and now recently also Australia, as you can see on the map there. So it's a true global network. It's one of the biggest private angel investor networks in the world. And as I said earlier, we, we were asked to, uh, to launch this in the Nordic countries uh, end 2015, and said that this is something that we really want to do, and interesting. So we brought the, the concept here to, to the Nordics and started out in, in Sweden. And we are working according to a process which is similar all over the world. So basically it's monthly meetings where we invite a number of companies to present for our local investors. So in the beginning of 2016, we had our first forum meeting as it is called. And then we have had forum meetings more or less every month since then. Uh, and as I said, we, we run a process which is similar all over the world. So as this is a member group, you have to be a member to be part of uh, Keretsu, uh, comes some benefits with that. And, and one of them is the ability to travel uh, around the world. So if you are a member here in the Nordic chapter, for instance, you can visit any other chapters, any of these 53 worldwide to uh, participate in their forum meetings, look at their deal flow, but maybe even more important, meet like-minded uh, persons uh, all over the world, which is, which is great. And the same goes also for, for companies. So if you apply to present here in Stockholm or the Nordics, you can as a next step present in other chapters around the world, which is a great benefit if you're looking for not only capital, but also sales channels and contacts and those kind of things. So we're, we're really trying to do, um, to sort of, increase cross-border investments. And we, we have had companies from US, from Europe here in Sweden presenting for our angels. And some of our companies, uh, I used to say our companies, but companies that has presented for us here have gone abroad and presented in Canada and um, uh, San Francisco and, and London and other countries. So um, yeah, that's, that's very short about the, the, the network itself. Very good. All right. And maybe the if you have a specifically on on now what as we're covering with with the Nordic band, there's a big demand and interest on the Nordic Baltic level. So so what are the the current numbers for for, for Sweden and the Nordic level of activity at, at this stage? Oh, you mean like statistics uh, in our in yeah our network? yeah. So I had actually a few slides on that as well. So let's jump to them. Um, Perfect. So <clears throat> first of all, I can say that we are, we are about 70 members uh, here in the Nordics tied to the network. Um, I would say that uh, roughly maybe 40 or 50 are more active than, than others. Some are fully invested or are interrupted by other stuff, but roughly 40 people are, are active uh, all the time. Uh, we have had since the start 22 forum meetings, uh, all of them here in Stockholm. We're usually in central Stockholm. Um, of course, a lot of companies have applied and we have choose then four or five per forum meeting. So in total, about 110 companies has been selected to present. And out of these, 24 have received investments from, from our investor base. Okay, good. Uh, one of them so far has done an exit. We, we haven't been around that for that long, as you know then. Uh, so, but at least one had done an IPO and thereby uh, an exit. It was a very short time to the IPO, so, but still two, two or three times the money, which was, was really good. Um, in total, we have invested about 1.5 million euros so far from our group uh, in these companies. So it tells you a little bit about the, the size so far. But uh, 
keep in mind that we are growing all the time, both uh, number of investors, but also maturity in investing, I would say. Very good. Okay. Oh, and, uh, yeah, some, some more numbers. Some more numbers, yeah. So uh, out of these, uh, all the members we have, about 37 of them have, have invested in these companies. Uh, individual investment ranges from small tickets in the, in the range of 4,000 or 5,000 euros, but up to uh, roughly 1 million, 1 million Swedish or 0 0.0 million euros. And the largest investment so far in one company is uh, 0.23 million euros, so uh, 2.3 Swedish roughly. And we are looking for all different types of companies and the ones that has attracted investment so far is, is for example, within gaming, uh, IoT, FinTech, MedTech, um, and some app web solutions. Right. So those are the ones that have been working the best so far. All right. Okay, I think in the end we could do a more technical, how do you get on board and, and how do the startups, for example, submit their information. But maybe at this stage we could end the sharing of screen and have more of the basis and maybe discuss with Ronja and yourself as well about your, your average views on, on the, the Swedish ecosystem, as you know that more specifically and, and, and Stockholm. And there's a huge interest, of course, how to uh, yeah, get, get more active in, in the Swedish ecosystem. So um, uh, Ronja, Jesper, so the, the Sweden, uh, let's say from, from the outside, the Nordics seems more or less like a single market, uh, Asia, US, and, and wherever should we call and where should we go? So, so Sweden has amazing kind of a feedback and, and, and what comes to the producing these large, amazing startups. So how do you see currently the, the Swedish ecosystem for, for business angels? You're now representing a, a specific uh, group of that, but uh, if you have some bigger views on that way. Maybe, Ronja, you've been traveling around quite a lot. How do you see the, the angel ecosystem in, in Sweden currently? Well, the thing that I really like about the ecosystem in Sweden is that, first of all, it's very active and it's also kind of relaxed. And I, I don't say that in a bad way. I think it's a positive thing. Uh, in U.S., when you look at when I've had Skype meetings with other angel investors, um, it's very high profile. Mm -hmm. And what I like in Sweden is that we have a level of trust that doesn't exist in the U.S., uh, where you do a background check just to talk to someone and you don't do that here. And uh, I think that that really helps and enables more companies to get great investors on board. And also we, we allow smaller investors. You don't have to be a multi multi millionaire to be um, an investor in Sweden. And I think that's also a, a great thing because in, Sweden, in the U S well, there are also so many people, but they're missing out on really quality people that can really offer their expertise. Uh, so if you allow an investor to say invest 200,000 kroners, um, but be on board on the journey and can help out with other things. I think that's, that's also a great thing. Uh, and the rooms are more accessible for everyone. I thought when I first started out, because my first business angel group was Stockholm Business Angels, uh, and uh, I, the, the tempo was different there compared to uh, Kiretsu, which is very international, more fast paced, uh, which I like. Um, but I I thought that the, the, the world was kind of close to everyone. It's very exclusive. It's not for everyone. But that has also changed. I think there are more and more opportunities for uh, kind of everyone to invest as long as you have the money and you know what you're doing. Uh, and also, you, you didn't say that, Jesper, but Kiretsu also, um, the model is that you have to be invited by someone that is already a member. So we keep track of who is in the room um, and uh, just to build that level of trust even further. And I think that that is one of the most important things. And um, so all of a sudden it's accessible for pretty much anyone to invest in the next unicorn. And it's also possible for a startup to get investors who has broad expertise and not just from finance or law, because those are the two most common investors, right? But we don't need 20 lawyers in a room. We need people who knows marketing, who knows extra strategy, who has uh, been entrepreneurs themselves, perhaps. Um, and there are a lot of new industries coming up. We don't have people that are 60 to 70 who knows how these industries work. So we need younger people to be involved. And younger people don't always have that same amount of money, but we need to still let them be part of this. I think that is one of the best things about Stockholm right now or Sweden. Um, and that is the biggest difference between the U.S. and Sweden. Very good. Okay, so, so it's feeling it's more, getting more, uh, let's say, uh, a bit relaxed and, and more open as, as, as Sweden compared to, it, it's a little more, and angel investing is typically a bit more fragmented, that the smaller groups and clubs based a lot on trust, but you see that, that now growing as, as once again, 
majority of all those large super startups in, in Sweden or, or in the Nordic state, they all been involved with some level of angels in the early stage. That, that's yes. the natural step. Mm -hmm. So, so what, just uh, maybe you could open up shortly about your, your own steps into doing this kind of a, did you know the term angel investing? And oh my God, no. Uh, <laughs> so I had no idea what I was doing, but I was, uh, so I was asked by a group of guys in Sweden. I, I lived in the US at the time. And they asked me if I could uh, get on board as an entrepreneur. And, um, but I had a work permit in the U.S. And when you have a work permit there, you, you sneak around <laughs> because it's a once in a lifetime thing for most people. Um, so I said, no, I can't, but I just sold my apartment. So I guess you need some cash. Take my money. <laughs> and that's how it started. Uh, I don't recommend it. It's not the smartest thing, but I really did trust these entrepreneurs in my life. Um, and I also knew that I would probably lose the money. So that was the one thing that I did understand that a lot of new angel investors don't understand. But then I kind of kept a straight face and I just, I, I read up on everything when it comes to law, when how finance, how does this work? I mean, it's not my background at all, but you, you learn by doing. And um, uh, I think that also um, mm -hmm. I've heard that I am, not the most common investor from the way I look and the way I behave and everything. And I also think that's refreshing. We need more people. We need more uh, diversity in this industry. And um, I know things that, that other investors in the room don't. Um, marketing has changed a lot in the last 25 years. Uh, what they did uh, in telecom 20, 25 years ago, is not going to work now for new startups. Um, but I can offer my expertise on that. So, uh, and then I became part of Kiretsu um, about four years later. But to be honest, and I don't recommend this either, I kept my identity hidden for the first three years, I think, um, for the other investors among, because they were all older and I had no idea if they would actually trust my opinion. And when they didn't know who I was, they agreed on everything that I wanted when it comes to um, our agreements. So... Okay, so, so more like a hidden profile in that sense. Okay. They thought that I was some dude sitting in Switzerland and not a 24-year-old actress in States. Yes. Cool. All right. All right. That, that's interesting. But that's interesting. So, so as, as what's easily forgotten that the angel investors, they typically have their background in entrepreneurial career or corporation, but they're not professional investors automatically. So you said that you learned. So, so that's something, at least in the Nordics, we, we see that there, there should be more, let's say, invest, startup investor trainings. And that's something career to do does as well but before creator before stuff so where did you educate yourself with oh my god uh, books webinars uh everything i could find on google um i called a friend as a lawyer and tried to understand and also this was one of the companies that i invested in was in england uh so because we we're gonna we were supposed to move over to england so that that's a different type of law to understand and um, so, uh, I just, and then I was just asking a bunch of people and also I, I did trust the entrepreneurs. I could also talk to them and ask them questions because one of them, this was his third, uh, startup and he All has right. succeeded before. So he was also very transparent with how this works and kind of looking out for me. And, uh, and again, not something that I recommend because you can't trust everyone with your money, but you need to know what you're doing. I was just very lucky. And that's how I, I felt safe and I decided to then do it again. Very good. But, but you still chose to join a group in that sense. So it wasn't enough just looking from... No, I, no I, wanted, I wanted to ask people and I wanted to... Um, and, and the thing is like, none of us knows everything, right? So we need to, we need to share our thoughts and our ideas and, um, and our concerns. And I think that that is one of the most important things with being part of a group is that whatever you... I know that I know nothing about, say, biotech, but I know that there are people in the room who knows a lot about biotech. So I can ask them, do we trust this? Will this work out? Uh, and they can say, yes. I'm like, cool, okay, because I think that their marketing strategy is not great, but let's talk about that. And then that, that's the whole idea because we, we're not um, uh, fully learned ever. We need everyone. Right. We need to help each other out. Exactly. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I had the of people. <laughs> just makes this way more interesting when and then sitting there with like 45 documents just reading up on things exactly right. before we go to over to to Jesper describing shortly about he's going into angel investing as well so so what would you say like now on the sweden level uh, which are the key angels now inspiring you and and taking really the ecosystem further would you like to name some of the names that that the, the outsiders should know about well, someone that has obviously uh, um, had an impact on my life is Ted Alvhage, who is one of the founders of uh, Kinesiform Nordics. Uh, we also have a podcast together in Vespolden, 
and uh, I've learned a lot from him. And uh, so I think he is definitely one of the key because also he is working really hard when it comes to cross border investments. He thinks that's very important. Um, and then there's an Annette Nodval, but I that's the thing. I don't I don't like the American model of that there are some superstars. I think that uh, we need each other. So I I appreciate the question. I understand what you where you're coming from, but uh, there are no superstars. The entrepreneurs are superstars, and then we're lucky to tag along and then help each other out and try to help the entrepreneurs succeed. And then if we're lucky enough, there's an exit. Absolutely. But then again, for, for, for the larger audience, those not entrepreneurs, not investors. So who do they relate on? Who are the main voices for financial investing in that sense? So that, that plays quite a good uh, impact role in the ecosystem as well. But th those are good names. So, so thanks for those. So uh, Jesper, maybe shortly about your, your going into the angel investing as well. And maybe who do you look up to? Because k is, is it's already massively global. It, it's doing international. So what, what makes you do angel investing through k -Retsu? But going the, yeah. the into angel investing. Very short about my background first. As I said, I, I was working with a, with a startup and we grew it to quite a big company, uh, but we grew it um, without angel capital or investment capital, uh, which was a little bit different and it had its challenges and its strength. So when I left that company, I, I had seen all the competitors who had investment capital and could sort of invest in marketing or whatever. And I felt that this is, this is the way to go. So that's why I started to look into to that area. And I wanted to work within companies who had that uh, possibilities or power, if you like. So I, as I said earlier, I started to look for startups to invest and work with and um, found one very interesting and, and decided to invest and work with that company. And the first thing I realized uh, in the starting weeks was the, the other side of the coin that when the money runs out, then you are in, a, in sometimes big trouble. So the first, time, the first thing I had to do was to raise more capital. Mm -hmm. And uh, so before I even invested in the company, I realized the, the risks with these type of investments and the challenge in raising capital. But also I was very um, interested by how it worked. So... It ended up me not investing in that company, but rather investing in one of the existing uh, investors, which was uh, Stockholm Business Angels. Okay. So I invested instead in Stockholm Business Angels fund. And um, through that, I got to sort of spread my risks into several investments at lower, uh, uh, lower amount in every investment. Uh, but I also got to meet with Ted, which is one of the founders of, of um, Ted Elbage, which is one of the founders of Kerezo also. But also another gentleman called Lennart Olsson, who is an extremely skilled uh, person who has spent most, most of his life studying this uh, venture capital industry. So I did some training and, and I read a lot and I learned a lot by evaluating companies and helping out with building the portfolio within Stockholm Business Angels. So that's how I got into this. And then when we got the opportunity to bring Kerezo here, I felt that this is a great way of continuing this thing that I love that much. Uh, talking to in, uh, investors and get to know them, talking to extremely interesting entrepreneurs and companies and trying to find out sort of the best companies to invest in and to, to be able to do that full time at the same time as I do investments. Very good. So that's how it all started. So, um, and Caretsu is an interesting uh, network, of course. There are other networks, uh, both globally and in Sweden. Um, what was interesting with, with Caretsu was the international part of it, uh, the possibility to go elsewhere and meet investors, but also uh, investment opportunities. And they also had a, a sort of a process that we thought could work also here. So we were, um, yeah, we decided to, to bring it here and, and give it a go and test it. Very good. Okay. So, so that's how I got into it, and that's why I'm still working with with Caretsu. Very good. Okay, that, that sounds like so. So you took the the step over to this kind of a global level already, and and seeing how how what are the possibilities there. So that would be as as you seen the let's say the, the local angel investing in in Stockholm, Sweden, on that level. So what were the main biggest surprises or learnings you received so far from the the value of that Caretsu global network? Um. Well, I think, I mean, this is, this is probably not unique for Caretsu, but I think this, 
this network for investors rather than a network for entrepreneurs. This was, this was a strength, I thought, that we met every month with skilled persons and we learned from each other. And by helping each other evaluating companies, we uh, hopefully uh, make better investments. And this is what you talked about a little bit, Ronja, to, to, to belong to a group with different skill sets. Uh, you're much more likely to, to find the, the best investment case and, and hence increase your chances for good investments. So that's one thing. Um, Obviously, there are also differences with with the uh, with Caretza Global. They are in US. They are obviously bigger. The deals are bigger. A uh, lot more money. Um, higher valuations. So those are a little bit different. So maybe the we were thinking about sort of opening up cross border investment uh, at an early stage, but we have also realized that there are differences between us and US, for instance, and it hasn't been that easy, to be honest, to get the international deal flow uh, to get that going. We have an interest from our investors, but so far uh, we haven't done that many investments in, for instance, US companies. There are cross-border going on between US and Asia, for instance, and, and other Europe countries. But uh, So that's also one thing that we have realized, and I think we can learn a lot from it, but uh, there's still a little bit, a little way, a uh, little bit to go. And most probably uh, cross-border will first happen in, in within the Nordics, maybe, and then within Europe, and then maybe go global. That's what yeah. I think. Well, that, that's a good point. And, and I guess on as angel investing, the typical is still the, the classic angel investing, two hours car drive max from yeah. home. That, that's what you invest in, so you have control. But thanks exactly. to the technical, uh, technical elements, and, and you, you're better able to do... Uh, on, on a larger scale uh, investments on, on a more more uh, larger area as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess the, the most classic uh, and, and good role models uh, on cross-border national elements is the Israel-US combination. There's a lot of traffic yes, that's startup right. and, and, and investments and the so-called startup nation Israel. That, that, that's definitely an, uh, an interesting solution. But it's, it's as we all know, it's very much about the trust. You know the locals there. So exactly. is that part of the, the k -Rich? So as we now focusing on the on the Nordic and Baltics, the new Nordic so called, and 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 it's it's as Ronnie also mentioned, it, it's quite easy, and and it's it's uh, the, the trust level is, is different as as the cultural elements. We we have the of course the handshake is, is has a specific meaning in the in the Nordic culture as well. So, uh, Ronnie, how do you see yourself? Will you be focusing now in the future as, as you're part of the the Keretsu, But will you do more international? Is that like you have relations to the U.S.? Is that the goal, or do you find like building more tighter Swedish slash Nordic? level of co-investor group what, what feels natural for you nordic for sure because i feel that the us they already got their stuff going on like they know what they're doing they don't really i'm, I'm not going to say not need us because of course <laughs> scandinavia is amazing um but i i think that um stockholm is an amazing place there's so much happening and going on here and i know that there are companies coming out of estonia or from finland or i just now recently met a bunch of finnish companies that i was just i was in awe i had no idea and one of the founders had sold ai to facebook and i was like why don't i know this i mean it's one hour away so i think that um the nordics should be a priority for all of us now to really figure out a way how to work together. And also um, one of the most important things for me when I invest is I, not just do I understand a company and what they're doing, but do I understand all the legal stuff? And it's easier to understand the legal stuff in the Nordics, how it works, because we also have a common sense, um, mm. which doesn't always apply in different states in, this, in America. And I, uh, I, I think that knowing what you're doing and not just, um, or, and not just going with the flow and hoping that this will work out if I invest in a company way over there. I, I think it's very good to get to know the entrepreneurs. Uh, I have so far only invested in companies here in Stockholm because I want to be able to knock on the door and say, hey, what's up and can I help you guys out? But we're all different. Some people just shove a money bag in there and then don't talk to them for two years. I want to be very active. I want to make sure that everything's gone. I'm on the advisory boards. Um, so it's just a different way of working or um, existing in this ecosystem, but I think that the Nordics have a very bright future if we um, work together and collaborate more, for sure. 
We're, uh, as, as one of the uh, Nordic band is also communicating this kind of a syndication ready startups and, and the, the main as, as we're building on trust, uh, why on earth would you invest in something uh, overseas in that sense? So, so what we require is an active local lead investor and, and uh, what the Niban is, for example, in the Baltics or, or Finland going to, to Scandinavia is, is that there is a help needed to market expansion. So do you see yourself as being a co-investor when you know, for example, lead investors from Estonia and, and you trust them and they ping you with a company, would that lower the barrier for you to invest? And would that, for example, increase the, the possibility for you to make uh, this kind of a cross-border investments? For sure. I mean, getting to know people is key for everything, right? So um, if I get to know either investors or entrepreneurs or um, I just met a Finnish company that I really liked and they're looking for investments. And then I started talking to some friends here um, and but they already have strong ties now to Stockholm. They know a lot of people, but they they know a group of people that I don't really know and they don't know my people. So that was a way to uh, maybe find other investors for them. So I. Um, Yes. <laughs> it sounds like it. Sounds like it. It's very perfect. Yes. No, I, I, I actually uh, agree. I think that's uh, that's really good what you're doing, and to be able to find um, potential investment cases where you have a lead investor, uh, I think that would help um, significantly. Very good. Yeah. Because and, it, I mean, if you could, if you could even uh, sort of agree on some sort of basic standards on how to evaluate or what you need to see within these investment cases uh, as a minimum before you invest. And that we could share uh, throughout the Nordic, I think that would also be good. So not only that you have a lead investor, but also that, that due diligence to some extent has been done and that looking at certain aspects of the company Very good. would also help, I think. Yeah, but we have we, we have a benefit that our culture is very similar in, in Scandinavia, so we under, we understand each other. Um, as soon as you talk to Asian investors, you might not have the same view on things, even though you think you understand each other. Uh, it's just a cultural thing, uh, and that's a barrier that you also have to break through if you want to invest in companies in other countries. Mm. Um, so I think when it comes to communications and how we speak and and why and um, and also I like that it's okay that someone is sitting in a room in track pants and someone else is in a suit. And as I said, it's more available for more people. Um, we don't have this investor role. We can still be very professional and do a great job, but we don't have this standard. I like that it's a little bit more casual. Yeah, that, that's a good point of, of the, this kind of standardized templates. That's something we see in that though the Nordic Baltics play well together. But uh, one of the main rules have been at this stage is that the, the, the juridical and, and tax elements, they are also different. So there's impossible at this stage to make this kind of a cross-border standard uh, uh, template, but uh, what is the, the golden rule has been that that it should be based in the the home country of the or, or region of that uh, that company applying for for growth. But then again, those papers should all be, of course, fulfilling those international requirements, starting yeah. from being in English. And that's yeah. something that the Nordic Baltics are very fluent on. I would yeah. say at this stage, so getting better better on that part. So. Right. What about Jesper? How would you say now, when if we start wrapping up on on uh, those interested in, in in entering the Swedish ecosystem and being part of those, of finding maybe those exciting startups as it's already been producing a lot uh, from the investor point of view? How what do you get out of, for example, Kretsu if you join the the trainings and the learnings? Do you get a Swedish twist or is it purely global already? So is there a specific reason uh, to join Kretsu in Norway? There, there are quite a lot of global uh, information in terms of how to do due diligence and training and stuff like that. But we try to do um, sort of a Swedish or Nordic package, I would say. So as an investor, if you join Keret, so I think, first of all, you, you get to become a part of a community, which is what Ronja is, is uh, talking about also. Uh, you get to belong to a group where everybody is looking for investments and interested in doing this. And where they're actually also really trying to learn from each other. So, I mean, uh, even within our group, we have the same <clears throat> tendency as, as throughout Nordics that we need to have some sort of, some person taking lead. Uh, but as if someone does it, then you can join that, that uh, person or that group and, and help with evaluating the companies and, and hopefully do investments yourself. So you get to belong to a group. Uh, we do have, um, training or education we call it academy so where we uh, well we have different courses in everything from you know how to do a due diligence um, how to evaluate companies how to find companies 
um, financial aspects of investments and those kind of things. So we try to help our investors become even better in investors. Very good. So uh, what are you, is that something you can attend abroad or you have to be physically present? How much streaming and, and digital services? Uh, well, so far we have done most of it actually in Stockholm, but yeah. uh, we, are, uh, we are located in, in meeting areas and stuff where we have possibilities for uh, joining over the web, for instance. So, but so far it has been in, in Stockholm, but it depends on the attendees, of course. Okay, good. And, and uh, then, then again, the technicality. So, so just to join, do, uh, I guess there's a, there's a membership fee, or uh, and there has to be invitation. So, how do you get access to be even invited? Is there is it contacting you or Ronia, for example? Is that the best yeah. way? Yes, so contact that's me. The best way. <laughs> contact right. Ronia or contact me. Or go to our webpage, um, uh, and obviously everybody can apply. And then uh, it's invitation only, but. Why do we have that? Well, it's because we want to meet the investor, we want to get to know them, and we want to make sure that they have sort of the same, same um, ideas and orientation as we have, and we also want them to fit into our group. But it's not, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not that hard. So, uh, yes, yeah. sir. we're very exclusive. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I yes, um, but it's it's the doors aren't open for everyone i know there are people who want to be a part of it but if you just as jesper said you need to be there and add value and yes there's a mm -hmm. membership fee and um if you're just there to hang around then do something else with your time i mean you're there to find companies to invest in and um add value as i said and that's the most important thing so um but i have been contacted by, by a few people um, through the podcast who wanted to come and then I brought them on as a guest uh, so they mm -hmm. can come on and see what it's like. Uh, but then with my journalism background skills, of course, made sure that I know <laughs> what they're all about before I bring them to the meeting. Um, but again, that's also easier. I, the, I think this more applies because this whole thing started in the US where nobody trusts no one and we can kind of trust each other because it is a smaller country. So, well, well, then again, to, to build that trust and, and finding you, for example, Ron, what's the best way? Where do you hang around in, in Stockholm? Is it some events or something? And uh, what should we follow? Uh, do you want an address or cafe where I hang out? No. <laughs> um, uh, the best way to get in touch with me is my email. Okay. Um, and so maybe you can put it in the event or something. Um, it only at investpolden.se. And uh, so that's the best way. And that, yes, I do go to a lot of events, but just as Jesper said before, there are some events that are really startup focused. And then this is kind of the only, uh, and then there's SSC on whatever, but the, in, on the investor side where we hang out and mingle together and, and uh, have a drink or coffee and, and chat, it's not that common in Sweden. It's more common to have startup events and I'm there too. Um, but emailing is always better and um, just describing what do you do yeah. why, and why do you want to join. And that, that's really interesting as, as that's something with the startup community easily forgets. It's those who facilitate, they, they bring the startups and then they bring the so-called VCs or professional investors, but they forget this kind of a, the, the angels specifically, they, they need other investors to do angels. For example, we have slush, we have take barbecue, uh, take barbecue for the first time. They're arranging their investor day now. And that's been a big part of the slush activity. So out of the thousand investors, majority of those attend the investor day just to meet with other investors. So you can find potential co-investors, learn from each other. And then why not the radical exit channels as well? So maybe that's something, uh, a good thing that, that you're having that as, as a more uh, an exclusive event. But uh, I guess that's something with the culture and community is building in Sweden as well. More investor meetings and, and building that skills together, sharing. Yeah. In that. We had one yesterday, but then again, that's a sign up for uh, specific people only. And but we're we're trying to uh, make sure that a lot of people that people are included. But you have to say that you want to be part of this world. We're not going to find you just sitting at home. Very good. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, you, you have Invest, uh, Invest Podden, so your podcast about invest, uh, investments. And that's in Swedish yes. or English? Both. Okay, good. So, so that's know, something it sounds so share. dry to talk about investments in a podcast, but I promise we're fun. Okay, uh, and Jesper has an episode as well. Um, we've yeah. talked, so it's like a morning show radio feel. It's very high tempo, a lot of laughter. Um, I can't do dry. So um, it's to educate more people in this industry. How does it work? What, what is it about? We're talking to entrepreneurs about their whole journey. We talked with Eric Reese about Lean Startup. Uh, so it's everyone around this ec ecosystem and um, have them share their journey, thoughts, ideas, and 
uh, especially what was the difficult parts and how did you get through it and not just read a success story in a newspaper because honestly the success stories are not that interesting after a while you don't really learn from them right yeah. uh, someone had an idea and all of a sudden they're a multimillionaire that's not really how it works so we um, I thought it was very important to um, to educate people on how the journey actually is um, and what challenges that you might face and how did other people deal with them so you're not alone right. yeah Perfect. Well, we'll get that, that, that's simply uh, to get in touch and then you're describing most likely the, the Swedish ecosystem as well and then, of course, from the global perspective. So that's interesting. Okay, Jesper, and, and maybe to end up with uh, finding uh, you as well and investor co colleagues, maybe lastly but not least is the startup. So so the, I guess the process is the same for those interesting companies to apply for the KRIT for me. Yeah, well, they, they apply uh, usually to our networks or to our website or to our members. Uh, we get the deal flow in and... Uh, the way we do is that we first uh, screen them digitally, uh, their applications, uh, but then we do invite them to a screening meeting. So they have to meet us physically beforehand and do their pitch. And they pitch for us at Keretsu and some of our members that want to participate. Mm -hmm. uh, and we try to figure out if these companies fit our invest investor base. Um, so it's a voting process, you can say. Yeah. We, we pick... Um, three, four, five companies each month that we think are suitable for our investors. And then are, they are then invited to the forum meeting where they present for the full forum. And then after the forum meeting, we also arrange um, a due diligence startup process where the investors can start to dig into the companies a little bit deeper. So it's a several step process, which, which I think is good because first of all, obviously we, we pick the companies we believe are the best. But also we get our investors to be part of the screening process. So in one way, we invite the companies that are most likely suitable for our investors. So okay. uh, that's a quite interesting step. But you, you apply through a website or through me. Um, that's the best way. Very good. Okay, thank you so much. That's been interesting. So discussing a little bit on, on the, it's, it still uh, feels like you're part of a, of a global family in that sense. So I, I, and all the tools and services you get access to as part of KRETS of Forum Nordic. So, so that's, uh, that's definitely a good added service. So, so thank you very much on this and, and highlighting some of the angel profiles on, on what we have in the Swedish Nordic level. So, so looking forward to have more of this kind of a dating service live and, and the upcoming events. What's the next uh, big event where, where definitely you can see a lot of KRETS of angels attending? Well, we have uh, already next week, we have the deal screening meeting where we invite six companies this time for this first um, screening event. Uh, and then the week after on the 4th of October, we have our next forum meeting. And then we have this every month. Uh, so the forum meeting is the, is the sort of the big event. Besides for that, we're running something called an expo, which is a full day event. It's going to be on the 17th of January. And so this is where we invite some of the companies that we have met over the year, but also new companies. Uh, last year, we had about almost 200 attendees and 17 companies present, uh, both from uh, Sweden and Nordics, but also from US. So uh, that is something that you can sign in your agenda and prepare for. So Very good. Very good to come. Definitely. So those uh, favorites. Yeah. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Having Ronnie there as well. And, and Ronnie, maybe what high? Uh, what are the main events you would say most suitable for on an angel level for internationals to come over to Sweden? What events would you recommend? Wow. Um, uh, since we don't have like here's the big party and come and join. Uh, accept them for it so we can be a guest. Um, I d there's not one one event. Uh, I mean, Stockholm Tech that was just now last month, um, and uh, Nordic Business Forum, uh, which was also founded by a guy in Finland. They've done a great job. I think the Nordic Business Forum is getting better and better, and I think that's a really good event. Uh, but it's not specifically for angel investors. Hmm. Uh, that's more like on the business side. But I think that that's also a great forum. Maybe Kate, uh, if you could help on that. Sorry? Maybe Kere too could help on that, implementing that into a more angel-friendly event as well. Why not? I think the best way to get to meet a bunch of angels is to contact someone in an angel network and then tag along on a meeting or a get-together. Uh, and, and again, which also kind of makes the whole thing a bit easier. It's not as formal. Um, so it's easier to get to know people because, the, again, it's about the trust rate and that's about getting to know people and not just standing in the same room looking at them. Very good. All right. Okay. So about Stockholm Tech, maybe Sweden Demo Day, I get a Sting Day and these so, so investor events and of course the KRH events. So, okay, mm -hmm. definitely. So, so let's, um, 
Uh, if any final words, yes, Ronia, I think we can start wrapping up and, and get those linking working on. I think I've heard, I don't know if this is right, but I've heard a, a bunch of people say now in other Scandinavian countries, I said, well, in Sweden, all the cool stuff is happening. And, you know, over here, we're just doing this little thing and it's not as cool. And I was like, that's not <laughs> what it's like. Everybody starts somewhere and just come and join us. We're not scary. Uh, just be friends with us. It's just, it's, it's not that hard. It's just say that you want to be in the room and someone will invite you. Um, so I, I, I think that is something that I worked really hard for the past couple of years is that I want to make this world more accessible. I didn't think that I was going to get to be a part of this world, but then I met people like Jesper who's super cool. Um, and the industry was not as, not at all, what I thought it would be, it was way better. So, um, it is for everyone, as long as you know what you're doing and you, you of course have a, some money <laughs> if you want to invest money. Um, but just don't be scared to knock on a door. Um, come and join the party. Very good. Okay, <laughs> good Swedish party. Yes, but I guess you uh, joined that. Those yeah, I, I agree with Ronja. Just uh, get in contact with us, and, and we'll help you out. And we'll we'll describe Carezzo as, as one possibility. But but we're we're happy to discuss uh, other opportunities in Sweden and the Nordics as well, of course. So just contact us. Yes, Thank you very much. You, you asked about events, and of course, I forgot to say that Connect. Connector Capital is a great event. I'm actually hosting it next year. It's in March in Gothenburg. Uh, investors from all over the world. Uh, so that's two days, and which is also just a great way to be in the room and hang out with people. So I can really recommend that event. Um, not because I'm there, but it is a really good event. Good. Uh, so I think Connector Capital, you can also sign up for. It's in March next year. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll see you there around and, and hope you have a great day. Thanks for all the comments so far. Cheers. Thank you for having us. Thanks. Seriously. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye-bye.